Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to talk about the Surface Laptop Studio. This is a very interesting device from Microsoft. It's been out for a little bit, but I'm visiting this device because I was very interested in the Surface 9 Pro. I've had a variety of different Surface devices over the years, but I haven't dipped my toe into the Studio line of devices that are more for creatives that have a bit more performance. I really wanted to see if this is something that I could utilize in my everyday life. So we're going to look at this this device and talk about whether or not it's worth what it comes with in 2023. Let's first start talking about the specs. This is a uh, aluminum designed device. It has a nice weight to it, comes with a 14.4 inch touch screen and it's beautiful display, very nice display. I've enjoyed editing photos, done some light video editing on this device and also allowed my kids to do a little bit of gaming on this device just to see what that performance looks like. Overall, the design of the device is really really nice. It is a little heavy. It's a little thick in its weight. I like it because it has a very sturdy base for what you can do with the display. The really interesting thing that the display does is that it kind of pops off here and articulates. It can go all the way around to the back and display completely backwards. You can flip this around a little bit and then dock it right here in the center. It kind of magnetically attaches. So you've got full access to the trackpad. As you can see here, you've got the display right here and the keyboard is now hidden behind. If you had a, a stylus, which this works with the Surface Slim stylus is what I've been using with it, and it's a great experience there. But it also will lay down all the way flat, and this is an interesting form factor. This is something that I've kind of always wanted for doing creative work, is to have some sort of a display like this in a mobile platform. The Surface 9 Pro does that. It can go down flat like this, and it's significantly more lightweight and compact. This device has the performance that you need if you're going to do more heavier lifting. If you wanted to use a stylus to do some heavy photo editing and video editing, this has the performance for that. So while it being a little thick, so you can see here when we have this folded down and flat, this is a pretty good size device. It's not thin by any means, but it's not a big deal in what it accomplishes. So with the 30 50 Ti that this comes with, the internal graphics card, you get a ton of performance. So let's talk a little bit about the specs on the inside of the device. We have an 11th gen Intel processor here. This is the spec'd out device. So there are two different options there as far as the processor goes. And we are now in a 12th gen series processor with Intel. So this is a little bit older. Because it's a little bit older, I wanted to run some benchmark tests and I did run some benchmark tests and I even compared the benchmark tests against the Surface 9 Pro in my comparison between this device and the Surface 9 Pro. And the Surface 9 Pro with the 12th gen processor that it has performs about the same as this device. They're pretty much neck and neck. And obviously the Intel chip is a beefier Intel chip in this device than what is in the Surface 9 Pro, but the Surface 9 Pro being the 12th generation and the chips just getting better every year, the performance is about the same. It was interesting to me when I did some comparisons in software, which you'll have to check out that video in doing some comparisons with this device and other devices, the performance was still relatively good. And if you consider the fact that most creative work that you're going to be doing is going to be utilizing the GPU as opposed to the CPU, the 3050 Ti that this comes with is going to perform really well for video editing and photo editing. And then, you know, with some gaming as well. And when my kids got a hold of this device and played a little bit of Fortnite and a couple of other games, I was pleasantly surprised at the performance that we were able to get out of it. 11th gen chip, which is last year's model, not a big deal depending on what you're doing. A 3050 Ti, which is a pretty good graphics card for a device like this, especially from Microsoft, is uh, going to produce great performance without being so overpowered that it's going to just destroy battery life. It's got a good size battery in it, and I was never able to get the advertised battery life because most of the things I was doing were actually utilizing that 3050 Ti. And when you're utilizing that graphics card, it's going to drain your battery a bit faster. But on average, I was able to get about the same amount of use out of this device as I would get out of a MacBook Pro. And a MacBook Pro, I would be doing creative work and stuff as well. And that type of device is 
highly configured to operate well on battery. On this device, on battery, you're gonna get a little bit less performance. That's very common on Windows laptops is that when it is unplugged, it goes into a more power friendly mode and it drains the battery less because it's not giving you the full performance. But I didn't notice drastic differences there. I was still able to get a good day's work out of this device while on battery power before plugging it back in uh, to charge for the night. Now to continue to talk about the design and the specs, we have the surface connection over here on the right hand side and I opted to connect this to the Surface Dock. This is the second generation of the Surface Dock and it has two USB Type-C ports on the front of it. It has two USB Type-C ports on the back and two USB Type-A as well as an Ethernet connection. And the reason that I went with this is because I wanted expandability. There are only two USB Type-C ports on this laptop. Over on the left-hand side here, there are two of them, and that's just not enough for expandability. Once you plug in a hard drive or like a solid state drive, and then maybe an SD card reader, you're tapped out and you don't have any more access. And plus that's a lot of cables going into your device. So with the Surface Dock, it's very nice because I could plug everything right into the dock and then one connection point to the laptop itself gives me charging, gives me everything that I need, and it's great. The only thing that I wish the Surface Dock had was HDMI ports. It only has USB Type-C ports, so your display that you're gonna connect it to if you're gonna use an external display definitely requires a USB Type-C connection or you're gonna have to get a dongle adapter that goes from USB Type-C to HDMI. Not a big deal, I have both of those things here, so it wasn't a problem for me. With the ports, it does lack ports. I wish that there was at least one more USB Type-C. In most cases, the dock actually really makes up for that. Even though it's an added expense, it provides the utility that I need it to. And then it's one point of connection to power and utilize the entire device along with my externals. There's also a headphone jack, so I didn't want to forget the headphone jack that's right next to the connection over here on the right hand side. And of course the dock has a headphone jack on it as well. So the first thing that I did when I got this device was jump into Adobe Lightroom and started doing some photo editing. I had a batch of photos that I needed to go through, so I imported them and started working with those photos. When editing photos in Adobe Lightroom, the 3050 Ti really starts to shine because Lightroom is able to utilize that graphics card and editing performance in Adobe Lightroom is great when you have a great graphics card. So definitely worked really well on this device. I was a little bit surprised at its performance was when I was exporting. The exporting process wasn't quite as fast as I thought it would be, but I realized that Adobe Lightroom when exporting photos utilizes the CPU more than it does the GPU. You should definitely check out my comparison of these Surface Laptop Studio to the Surface Pro 9. I did not expect the exporting of photos to go the way that it did, so make sure to check out that video. So exporting definitely on this device was slower than I thought it would be, but that's not the end of the world. Usually, if I'm going to be exporting a bigger project, I will walk away from the computer and let it do its work. But editing photos, a great experience. Now, I've been using Adobe Premiere Pro a lot more lately, especially now that I'm working with a video editor. And with that video editor, and Adobe Premiere Pro, I export all of my videos on this end. And so when I export the videos, I want good performance. I want those videos to be exported as quickly as possible. And with the 3050 Ti that this device has, I can count on those videos exporting relatively fast. If I compare that to maybe my MacBook Pro, which is an M1 Max, the M1 Max is a slightly faster than this, but not by much. Considering the price difference, this is a lot cheaper of a laptop than what you would have to to spend to get a Max Edition MacBook Pro. So video editing was a great experience for me on this device. And especially when I have to plug in externals and everything and connect a lot of additional memory to my device so that I can work with those big files, being able to connect all of that to the Surface Dock was a great experience. So I wanted to see how this laptop would perform when gaming. So I brought in my kids, we installed Fortnite, and I let them loose. Now this has a 120 hertz display, and most of the time when they were playing, it was around 100 to 120 frames per second that they were experiencing. Except for when there were more intense scenarios, when they were jumping around a lot, maybe avoiding gunfire, that it may dip down into the 80s or 90s. But most of the time it was around 100 or 100 plus, which is great. That's good performance out of a device like this, and with most 
games, I think you're going to see great frame rates on this laptop. So it's definitely a good option for gaming. It's a great line between a gaming laptop and a creative laptop, offering the best of both worlds for those of you that are interested. So what are my final thoughts on this laptop? First of all, the design and just the way that the laptop works with the studio type of display that pops off and articulates and kind of goes into a more creative mode. I like that. It definitely would take a little bit of time for me to kind of rework my workflow to figure out the best way to work on a device like this. If I wanted to truly be in a laptop scenario, this is a great option because I could flop the screen down and go flat with the display like I showed earlier, utilizing a stylus and sit and have this on my lap while relaxing and utilize it, having the performance of something that I typically wouldn't be able to find elsewhere in a device where I could use it like a true Surface device. I think that's a really neat option and something that you can't find in most other devices. Would I utilize something this heavy in that type of an environment or would I just end up using it on a tabletop like this in which I could get a external display that has touch sensitivity and a stylus pen or something like that and utilize that experience. But that's another thing that I have to worry about in my office and figure out where to put. So a device like this is truly convertible and that's where the utility is and its ability to be a laptop to convert down into something that can be a creative tool for those of you that want to use the stylus and have uh, more flexibility than most other devices are going to provide without sacrificing the horsepower that you need to pull off your creativity. It is a little old though. This with the 11th gen CPU is last year's model and so I wonder if they're going to upgrade to a 12th gen maybe sometime later this year. That's something that we really don't know whether or not they're going to upgrade this model but I think that it's probably would make sense that they do because it's a current model that they're selling and there hasn't been any signs that I'm aware of that they're going to discontinue this line of product. So later this year, they might upgrade to a 12th gen. And when that happens, we would likely see a performance boost because the 12th gen it just really performs a lot better than the 11th gen. And then also the 3050 Ti, we might see maybe jump up to a 40 series or something like that, which would be a significant performance boost as well if you're doing heavier lifting things. If the creative work that you're doing is fairly light and you want a convertible device, you're not concerned with a massive amount of horsepower for elaborate video edits and stuff like that, this device is absolutely perfect and you're gonna get many, many, many years of use out of this device with its current spec sheet that it comes with. There obviously are a couple of different options spec wise that you might think to choose such as more RAM to future proof the device a little bit. You can spec it out with up to 32 gigs of RAM. And then you also might wanna go with the one terabyte just so that you have enough storage. Of course, there is a two terabyte option as well for this device. So if you need more storage, you might expand to that as well. Make sure to check out the links in the description below so that you can see the current pricing and availability of this laptop. And I hope that Microsoft does come out with a third version of this laptop. I think it would be the third generation of this laptop if they choose to improve the specs this year or perhaps maybe next year in 2024. Let me know what you think about the Surface Laptop Studio in the comment section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.